Okay, so what I'd like to do in this video is show you how you can use Table 2 and your TI-84 calculator to work uh, problems that involve the inverse normal probability distribution. Okay, so let's look at a quick example. So number one here says, find the z-score that cuts off the lower 10% of area under the standard normal distribution. All right, this phrase here, lower 10% of area. All right, so under the bell curve, that lower 10% would be somewhere over here. I'm going to draw it, you know, bigger than it probably actually is, um, you know, because, you know, it's, it's easier to see, obviously. So here's the lower 10%. I'm going to do my best to shade this. So it's just a chunk of area right here. All right, so let's pretend that's 10% there. That's 10%, which is 0 0.10. So that's the amount of space right there under the bell curve. All right, now the big question is what is this z-score? So what z-score do I have to put right there to cut off that lower 10%? So now as a probability statement, it's a little odd to write. The probability that x is less than some z-score, and I know the answer, is 10%. We're solving for that value, the probability that x is less than z, equals 0.10. Now, if you want, you can put a capital Z in here, make, make, make a little more sense. So the probability some z-score is less than z is, less, is equal to 10%. You know, what is that z-score? All right, so now in terms of a table, this is a piece of cake. You go to your table, and you look up where 10% is in your table. Now, obviously, um, in order for it to be 10%, this is on the left-hand side. Clearly, you can see it's on the left-hand side. So when you go to your tables, you don't want to be in this table. This is the positive z-score table. These probabilities, as you see, the lowest one is 50%, right? And the highest one is 100%. So you have to go to the first part of the table that has the negative z-scores in it. All right, and the lowest one here you can see is essentially, you know, 0.1 of a percent up to about 0.46. And I'm sorry, here, here's a half down here, right? So this, this table, where this table leaves off, the next one picks up right at the spot. All right, so let's give a look. We've got to find 10% in this table. So I'm looking for 10%. Because remember, this table gives area on the left-hand side. So in other words, if I, if I want to find that area, I have to look in the body of the table. In the, la the last questions we were working on, you had the value of the z-score. And we would look up the z-score and then find that area. All right, so let's find 10%. All right, here we go. This is getting close. 10, 9, 3. Here we go right here. Look at this value. 0.1003. That's actually 10.03%. So that is as close as we can get to 10%. All right, so now if we follow across this way, that's negative 1.2. Going up, that's 8. So that z-score is negative 1.28. All right, so in other words, if I put negative 1.28 right there, that'll get me as close to as I can to cutting off an area of 10%. So that is... Um, Z equals negative 1.28. All right, so there it is by using the table. Very easy calculation on the table, as you can see, because it's very visual. And obviously, you got to find the one that's closest. The one that was closest for us was this one. Sometimes it's like right in the middle of two, and you got to, you know, kind of figure out how far far it is from one to the other, and you know, figure out what one's closer. But this one's kind of obvious. All right, let's do another one. Find a z-score that cuts off the upper 1% of area under the normal distribution. All right, so let me go cut that right now. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, listen, 1% is this little tiny speck up here, right? It's so small. But I'm going to draw it so that we can see it, you know, because it's just going to be a big old pain in the neck if we don't. So that's why I don't use the calculator to draw these pictures, because what ends up happening is it's really hard to see them. All right, so I'm just shading this picture up here. All right, so there it is. All right, so let's label this area, which is going to be 1%. Remember, 1% is 0.01. All right, the 
don't say 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is 10 percent. You get it when you move, remove the percent sign. You're going to move the decimal two spots to the left. All right. So this area right here is 1 percent. All right. So the big question right now is, you know, what is that z score? So z equals what? All right. So this probability statement. I'm just going to copy the prior one. This is the tricky part right now. This table and this table, everything in table two is cumulative. Remember, table two does not give areas on the right. Table two only gives areas on the left. So when we shaded our region here, we have a shaded region that is on the right-hand side. All right, well, the problem is you don't want to start looking up 0.01 in this table because that's an area on the right. So what we need to do is find the area on the left. So actually, even though it's not shaded, we need this area right here to the left of that. Well, by common sense, if this is 1% of the area, then this area right here has to be 99% of the area. So this is actually 0.99. So this is 99% of the area. That's 1% of the area. So in fact, when I go to this table right here and start looking up my area, I am not going to look up 0.01. I'm going to, in fact, be looking up 0.99. Now you say, well, how come? Well, because once again, this table only gives areas on the left. So when I, when I use inverse normal, I have to remember that and always use the area that's on the left. Even when the question gives me an area on the right, I still have to look up the one on the left. All right, so I'm going to find the closest um, area I can to 0 0.99, 99%. All right, so here we go. 9906, 9904. Here we go right here. Look at that. 9901. All right, so that one right there is closer than this one. This is 9898. This is two ten thousandths away. This is only one ten thousandth away. All right, so this one's closer, and that z score is 2.33. All right, so this probability statement, that's going to say 0.99. The probability that I'm less than a z score is equal to 0.99. Okay, great. And what's that answer? Well, we just looked it up. That answer is z equals 2.33. So once again, if I go back to the table, here is the closest one, 0 0.9901, 2.33. All right, so using the table, you can see it's not bad to, to uh, use the, you know, the inverse normal distribution. Now, what about using your TI graphing calculator to find this? As it turns out, the TI graphing calculator does have this capability. So it's in the distribution menu. So if I go second bars, there it is. It's option three. See, it says inv norm, which means inverse normal distribution. All right, so like anything else, if I, if I move down here, anything in this menu, that the, the dilemma with it is you have to know how to use it. All right, so if I select option three, my calculator blinks because um, it's waiting for me to give it inputs. So in other words, you have to know how to use it. All right, so for those of you that have this calculator, you're going to be in my boat. For those of you that have the new calculator, uh, the new version of this, it kind of prompts you and gives you inputs. It says, what's the area? And it says, what's the mean? What's the standard deviation? All right, but at the end of the day, I don't know how to use this. So in norm. So what does it need? All right, well, it only requires three inputs. If you remember when we were working with the um, normal CDF operation, it needed four inputs. This one doesn't need four. It only needs three. And the first one is the area, but it's area on the left. And I can't stress that enough. I can't tell you how many times students put area to the right in that spot. So it's area to the left, mean, standard deviation. In that order, it's got to be area on the left is the first input, then a comma, then the mean, then a comma, then the standard deviation. Now remember, the mean and standard deviation for the standard normal distributions are 0 and 1, respectively. All right, so let's work this first problem here using the inverse norm operation. All right, so you know what, what would that look like? All right, well, it's not too bad. Inv norm of area on the left. All right, so area on the left of what? Well, obviously, area on the left of the z-score. So what is the area on the left? Well, it was 10%. All right, so I'll pop in 10%, which is 0 0.10, and I'll hit a comma. And now it needs the mean, which is always zero for the standard normal distribution. And then it needs the standard deviation. 
All right, so area on the left, comma mean, comma standard deviation. So let me type it in the calculator. 0 0.10, comma 0, comma 1. Close my parentheses. Now we got the answer. It's about negative 1.28. So that's what I'm expecting to see here when I say go get me the answer. Uh, what did I do there? Oh, look what I did there. See that? I put a 10 there. Let me fix that. That should be 0. Uh, 1, I'm sorry. What happened was I didn't uh, hit my parentheses. There we go. 10%, 0, 1 for the standard deviation. All right, there we have it. Negative 1.28155 dot dot dot. Obviously, the calculator's answer is better uh, than the answer we got from the table. It's much more accurate. But at the end of the day, when we round, you can see it's the same answer. All right, so let's go ahead and do the next problem now. All right, so it's the same dilemma. So it's still going to be in norm. This time, area on the left. Remember, it's always area on the left. So remember, the question gave us 1%. If you look over here at the question, it's talking about the upper 1%. The biggest trap is students put 0.01 in there and get the answer wrong. And I'll show you what happens when you do that. Let's get the answer first. This is 0.99. That's the area on the left. So 0.99 is the area on the left, comma 0, comma 1, mean standard deviation. All right, so if I go to my calculator, second bars, option 3, 0.99, comma 0, comma 1. You need the, the z-score that has 99% of the area under the bell curve to the left of it when the mean and standard deviation is 0 and 1. All right, that's 2.326. That 6 tells that 2 to go to a 3, and that's what we got our answer here, right? So obviously, we could be as accurate as, as we need to be uh, using the calculator, as you can see. One thing I do want to point out, and this is true for both normal CDF and inverse norm, when the mean and standard deviation are 0 and 1, you actually don't have to type them. So notice what happens if I say inv norm of 0.99. Notice it's the same answer. I didn't type the 0 and 1. So if you leave the 0 and 1 out for inverse normal, it automatically assumes you want 0 and 1, which is kind of nice. It saves typing. Um, for, for, by the way, it does that for normal CDF too. If you leave out the 0 and 1, it automatically assumes them. If you have the new version of the calculator, I believe it automatically puts 0 and 1 in there, and you have to change it if you want to. All right, so as you can see, um, the inverse norm feature in the calculator, very easy to use. I will say this, though. Let's say you're that guy that fell for the trap, this 1%. This, this I see students use all the time. So let's say you're the guy that fell for that trap. You went 0 0.01, comma 0, comma 1. You know, and you, you, you say, well, you know, what would make me do that? Well, you know, you see the 1% in the question, and, you know, 1% is 0.01, and, of course, you want to jump and put the area in there because, you know, the area comes first, and you forget that it's area on the left. Now, watch what happens. So, wait a second. If I'm in the upper 1%, that z-score right there, which is, by the way, to the right of 0, is negative 2.3. Now, how on earth could that be? How could this number, which is on the right-hand side of 0, be a negative number? Clearly, that's impossible. So that's how you know you made a mistake there. You know, but a lot of students are just getting you know uh, button happy on the calculator. You start punch, uh, punching buttons, and whatever the calculator says, people tend to put down. Don't be that guy. You know, don't fall for that trap. Don't you know just write down an answer because your calculator says so. You know, you, you have to ask yourself, am I asking in the calculator the correct question? And you know, you got to be careful with that. All right, so hopefully this helped you out a little bit. Um, make sure that you read section seven point five in the textbook gives a lot of examples with this material. If you have any questions, message me in Blackboard. Thanks for watching.